never paid back my student loan. He's running out, smelling like curse. She come on. She tells me not to worry about judgment day. She says I'm dying to get in heaven just ain't our way. I'm gonna holler and I'm gonna scream. I'm gonna give me some mess to learn. journalists, let me know that. And, uh, it's got this really creepy picture on the front. On the front of the album cover, I got my head cut off and I'm holding my own head and my own hand down there. I mean, I got on a nice suit. But still, you show it to little kids, kind of scares them out. So it's got a horrible title and a creepy picture. So you've got to be asking, Ray, why would you do that? You wouldn't be asking get in unison, would you? I'll tell you, said some of you sitting there want to know randomly. Uh, I finally figured out you get more attention by burning down the barn than you do carrying out the trash. If this should be the first time you've ever seen me perform, you probably come to the conclusion that I am an acquired taste. And... I am not for everyone. And this, this next song here should weed you out. <laughs> Places, 
the clubs close at 2 o'clock. And what happens is, is after the club close, they lock the doors and that's when the real nightlife begins. Jack Jones. Then the girls from the landing strip club come over after they put the clothes back on. So I made my blues and I'm, I'm sitting on the hand. I play twist and shout. And this tall drink of water look in me like she might have to shoot a way out. She came up to me. She said, you know anything good on that guitar? I ain't say nothing. I just kept playing. She never heard that song called Folk Salad Amy. I, I just kept playing. She said, every time I hear that song, my insides feel like warm butter. I just want to take off my clothes and dance around in my underwear. I said, down in Louisiana, where the hell I need a girl so mean. So, thank you, Tony Joe. Thank you. That's all I do of it. But it was enough. She was a woman of the world. So me and this dancer, we hit it off like a metaphor. Like a metaphor for a hydrogen bomb. We was a rich uranium supercritical mass. We was a chain reaction. It was a love and lust. It's mostly lust, but it's a mutual attraction. So there I was, boys, at 21 years old. I had it all. I had a fine a strip of girl ran in a gold topless bar. The future wasn't a promise. But there were dark clouds on the horizon. She was a beautiful girl, but she liked to drink a lot of tequila. Yeah, that ain't all. I come home four or five times. And she hauled my last pop. So we broke up and, and she went to Hollywood. She married her an actor. She got a job dancing on the Hudson Brothers TV show and modern lipstick for Max Factor. Glad she did all right. I got over her eventually. I am glad she done all right. Well now me, you know, I never really busted through the gates into the big, big time as a rock and roll star for 40 years. I just carried around an old gold top guitar. But love and fate. Our mysterious things in this funky old world. It was 33 years ago, I ended up marrying that mother blue store girl. We had us a boy, he's 29 years old, and I was playing guitar at San If Lucas is going to hang his life on a guitar, he's a, he's a young man, he's got, he can do whatever he wants, you know, but, so he, I, I, but I'm very, very grateful for the time that I get to share the stage with my son.
team score. Not one of two years ago, really, one of the boys actually went over and over again. I didn't really know about it then. And we met later and everything. And the girl, in, in the song, the dance and everything, she actually, uh, she, she, she uh, uh, went to went to L.A. and there was a, a thing called, a, the got a job dancing on the Hudson Brothers TV show, which was a summer replacement show for the Sonny and Cher show, you know, and uh, and then she did marry an actor and she, and we stayed in touch. Every two years she sent me a picture of her and her new Lexus. <laughs> She's trying to say that. But, uh, speaking of my wife, Judy, what happened was, is, uh, next song here, my wife, Judy, and I, uh, we wrote together. I had this rough gig. It's a rough gig. The sound was really squeaky. I mean, these guys here, they know what they're doing. And it just sounds pristine. And, and, and the crowd was pretty rowdy and already out there. And, uh, and, uh, and, and the promoter was kind of sketchy, you know, kind of just scribbling. Like, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but I have a gift. During that first song, Rabbit, where I come out and play that song about the dog chasing the rabbit, during that song, I have this ability, as I'm playing and singing it, I have the ability that no matter how dark it is, I can count the number of people in the audience, multiply that by the cover charge, and take 80%. <laughs> This gig. That was the gig. I said, man, it's kind of a rough gig. She goes, well, everybody turns a bad trick every now and then. And, uh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Kyle, you want to give me a groove on this?
Christmas if it's after a midnight. And it's better to be content than to have to always be right. You think things are broken, but how I put a bomb in fear. So I flew out there. So on the way out there, I left those two measures where there was nothing. We went out and went to his house out there. He lives in Beverly Hills. It's not a big mansion. It's just a one-story house, but it's great. He's got this little studio there. And it was just Ringo and Bruce Sugar's engineer and me. And we did the track, which is pretty, wow, because you're sitting there playing and going, for a beetle, man. And, uh, and, so, and so, uh, so, so, but on the way out there, I left those two measures uh, where there's nothing there on the record to see if he would do the fill from Get Back. You're gonna have to buy the album to find out. Because we didn't bring any, so you have to go to the website. Or so, anyhow, but after we finished the, the deal, we just do this. Ringo said, Who are you gonna get to play bass on this? And I said, Well, I don't know. And he said, How about Don Was? I said, I don't know Don Was. He said, I'll ask him. He said, Who are you gonna get to play guitar? And I said, I don't know. And he said, How about I'll ask my brother in law, Joe Walsh? And so uh, I said, That's fine. So at that point, uh, I called up Chris Robbins and said, hey man, I got a beetle and eagle, I need a crow. And uh, he said, yeah. uh, And so then, and then later on, I got this text from Ringo. He said, come out here, we're going to do this video thing. So we went out there and did that. You want to you want to tell off that story? Come on, tell it. Come on, Lucas. Come on, over your friends are on, man. We're doing this video, and so I'm out there, and I'm out there in Ringo's studio, and, and uh, Britt Carpenter, who's is filming this, and he's doing that with Ringo and everything. And then uh, he had some film of Joe Walsh in the same studio, and Don was, which they weren't there at that time, but he edited it in there where it looked like they were playing right in the video. And then, so then I, I called up Chris Ryan. I said, "Hey man, I'm doing this video," and I said, I, I, "Would you do a video?" And I didn't really know the technical terms, so Lucas got on the phone with him. So I texted him and I said, hey, I need you to send a landscape video, meaning like you hold your phone, landscape, and uh, because every, the, all the other videos were filmed in landscape, and uh, send it to me. And so about an hour later, I get a video and it's him in a bush playing guitar in a horizontal. And I didn't have the heart to tell him like landscape meant, <laughs> it was very <laughs> Landscape meant horizontal. Not in a bus. <laughs> <laughs> and you the video of that too, so I'm very, very grateful for that. And, uh, so, uh, anyhow, uh, the, the album I did before co starring was called Tell the Devil I'm Getting There as Fast as I Can, which is, uh, which is meant to be taken metaphorically, you know, like say, I'm an old cat, and just, you know, I'm just a smart ass. And I said, well, how would you get old? And you go, well, tell the devil I'm getting there as fast as I can. Hopefully it's 
metaphorically, not a prophecy, but. Uh, and it's not really a concept album, but there's a theme that runs through a couple of songs that I mentioned, you know, an old cat, you get to be my age, you start thinking about your mortality, so there's a couple of songs on the album where the idea is, is I hope God grades on a curve. <laughs> I'm not Mother Teresa, but hey man, I'm not a teller so, so maybe a C minus, maybe a C minus won't get me into heaven proper, but maybe it'll get me in some sort of celestial vocational night school.
well very much. And since I've broken the vow, I took us a child over to name drop. And that song there, I had the very good fortune to have Eric Church and Lucinda Williams sing on that. And, uh, which, uh, and there's actually a video that I did myself of Tell the Devil I'm Getting There As Fast As I Can and Eric Church and Lucinda are in the video. If you should happen to see Eric and Lucinda, don't tell them they're in the video. I didn't. So anyhow, we got a, a record, that, first, that record was, uh, was called uh, Co-Storm, and one after that is called Co-Storm 2. This is a song off that. Had the very, very good fortune to have my friend uh, Steve Earl singing this song. And, uh, it's kind of one of, kind of one of the things that wrote these songs, and I asked Steve to sing it, and I said, will you sing it? If he had said no, I probably would have put the song on the album. Anybody else do it? Get off this miracle round The kids are 
animals down clear Shine along by the black rose There appear between the legs Where a mirror sunglasses I'm pretty sure that she stopped She can screech until a stop Almost run on the boots Said get your head to the ass in a car It's right or die So I got in And I sat down on her Hershey's chocolate bar She smiled as she flirted Before I closed the door She said let's go get some text mix Sing it with Lisa. She said, Buckle up, Desperado. We're gonna make that Kelsey run in 10 more seconds. I love a woman who's pretty reckless. She wears a bullet on her necklace. She ain't ashamed of her redneckness.
Hey, well, I came over somehow the word redneck just came to me and I said I wrote the song backward and it just so I could have a bunch of nice people say that word. Just somehow in go with it. Well, I guess the thing that we did to it was well. Uh, if you should have a request, just write that on a twin on a fifty on a hundred. And uh, We'll, uh, we'll try to do them all here tonight. I just couldn't hear what that was. Uh, I wish I could hear you. But don't yell. What's he saying? What's he saying? Oh, gosh. Well, um, there's so many songs I've written that I just, I just forgot, forgot about. You know what I mean? Boy, I said it takes a quick thing. They turn. What do you mean you can't do that? Now, you like this one just as well.
all you do at the scene on this uh, Roman King book goes, Ray Wilder. And I turn around and go, what? She said, I recognize the back of your head. And, uh, and I said, oh, she said, hey, listen, we're going to be at the show tonight. Are you going to do this song up against the wall, Red Dead Mother? And, uh, I'm not trying to bleed you for a while. I'm just telling you what happened. I said, and she said, we hear you don't do it every night. And I said, I don't do it every night. She said, are you going to do it tonight? And I said, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. She said, if you don't do it, we're going to be so disappointed in you. And I know how she felt, because back in the 80s, I went to see Bob Dylan. And I really wanted to hear Bob Dylan do Masters of War, but he didn't do it. Or he did it and I didn't recognize it. <laughs> see Bob and Dylan. But Bob Dylan right now, he had Charlie Six in his band for a while. He's got a great, great band down and everything. So anyhow, uh, for you people that have that void in your life, Having me sing up against a bald redneck mother can fill that hole within you. I'm going to have my friend Dave come out and help me on this a little bit. And also, uh, hey, you got, probably got a. There he is right there. You know him, you love him right there. You got that mic, right? Yes, there's, uh, there's some friends of mine here that can share that mic with you. There's a band uh, here in town it's, uh, called Midnight River Choir. I don't know if there's some of those guys going to be here or not. I thought, but they're going to come up and we'll figure it out. I don't know they might not be able to get in. But we are one of those cats. They're here. So anyway, a long time ago, I was playing far away called West Texas. If you was a young, long-haired, cosmic cowboy hippie musician in these very dangerous times, this was my fourth. Willie Nelson sang in the Armageddon World Headquarters in Austin, Texas, bringing the hippies and the rednecks together in the power of damn good country songs. Well, this isn't one of those. He's born out of the long. So is I. Sing one, two, 
bad footed and across the devil's backbone. Yeah. 
hill, sky hates Stone Hill. Don't push me, I'm a grown ass man. And I'm flashing my caution, careful who you cross, son. I'm reckless and wild till she comes back again. Second. 